Now, this is quite a useful technique for sound manipulation. Say you've got a sound you really like, but some of the effects you've applied are a bit unpredictable, and playing different notes doesn't work as you'd like. Now, this is the time for resampling. Particularly good for making dubstep basses, eerie atmospheric sounds, and generally anything pretty messed up. Reason 5 makes it very easy. Firstly, we're going to scroll to the top, with the mixer here, and right click and create a spider audio merger and splitter. If you hold shift when you create it, it doesn't connect to anything automatically, which is just what we want. Now hit tab to look at the back of the rack, then route the mixer into the splitter, and put the splitter back into the mastering suite. And then another channel from the splitter, route into the sampling input in the audio I.O. section of the top. Now hit tab to go back to the front of the rack and try playing a sound and seeing if it shows up in the sampling input up here. Sweet! Yep, sorted. Now, head over to Kong. You can do this with the other reason samplers as well, but we're going to use Kong. And in an instance of N and Nano, so if we make another new one just now, we're going to click the little audio wave button here that has the convenient tooltip start sampling and then play our sound. In this case, that string sample, after I turn the pitch back up, since it sounds pretty cool with the echo on it. So, let's give that a go. So, oh, wrong one. Here we are. Make sure nothing is playing, and start sampling. Make sure you click edit at the end. If you click stop, it goes straight in and you've got your sample, but pressing edit allows you to tidy things up in this editing window, which lets you normalize the sample, which makes it as loud as it can be without clipping. You can reverse it, crop it, so cutting off the start and the end. So let's do that now, actually. Uh, if we make sure this snap sample start end to transients is selected, this means that the sample will only start where the wave is at a middle point, which prevents the wave sound from clipping at the start of the end. So watch, it kind of snaps to all the different wave points, as opposed to if it's not on, it's more of a smooth dragging experience. Yeah, that's the right word to use. Um, so we've got the start there. Happy with that. And let's leave the end near to the end. And then hit crop, and you're presented with the new sample. And let's normalize that again to make it as loud as it can be. Now, if we play that, that's quite noisy because we normalized the crap out of it. And we should have probably just made it so that the volume was loud on the recording in the first place. But I think the noise actually kind of adds to the sample and means that I don't have to go back and redo this part of the video again. And you can also loop it and do things like that, crossfading the loop and whatnot. But for now, let's leave it and check out our shiny new sample. Now we can chuck it in the song and add even more effects to it. Then get inspired to resample it again and add more effects. And yeah, it's a pretty vicious and addictive cycle. Be prepared to lose a lot of time to resampling when you get the bug. And so there we have it. Some effects more eerie than Barack Obama dressed as a bunny rabbit. Tune in for day six, where we'll be talking about the structure of Psytrance and arranging the song. Hoodlepip.